Hey everyone, this is a tutorial for how to set up the new AI service in RetroArch so that you can play games in foreign languages. I'm the contributor behind this feature and I've been helping people set it up for the past week or so. So if you've had problems getting it to work, I should be able to help solve them for you. But first, a quick description of what the AI service is. The AI service allows you to capture a screenshot of the currently running game and then either display a translation of the text on the screen or have the computer speak it out for you. Keep in mind, this uses machine vision and translation, so it's not always going to be perfect. You're going to need at least version 1.7.8 of RetroArch for this to work, but you won't need a powerful machine to do this stuff, just an internet connection. Now, unfortunately, the tutorial write-up available on libretro.com for this was a bit confusing since there are three different ways of setting this up, each with their own pros and cons. I'll start with the easiest first. First, we set the hotkey to use for triggering the service. We go to Settings, Input, scroll down to Hotkey Binds, then all the way down to the bottom to AI Service. I've set mine to tilde here. Next, go back to settings and scroll down to AI service. This is the main configuration section. For AI service output, we have a choice between image mode, which will pause the game, wait for a translation to come back, and then display it on the screen. You can then press the AI service button again to unpause and continue. Otherwise, we have speech mode, which will read out the text without pausing. Next is the AI service URL that RetroArch will talk to to get the translations. We're going to put in http colon slash slash ztranslate.net slash service. This is a site I've created for this that you can use for free. Next is AI service enabled, which should be turned on by default. If source language is set to don't care, then it will try to auto-detect the source language in the text. Target language defaults to English, but other languages are supported. And that's it. However, I do recommend attaching a ztranslate API key to the AI service URL so that you can have more control over how the screenshots get processed by the server using the OCR page that I'll talk about a bit later. So let's do that now. First, go to ztranslate.net. You'll have to do this on a PC since the HTML formatting doesn't work right now for mobile, but keeping that in mind, we go to the sign up page. We sign up like on most any other website, and once we click the email verification link, we're logged in. We go to the settings page, and at the bottom is the API key. Back in RetroArch, for the URL, we put in http colon slash slash ztranslate.net slash service, but then we add question mark API underscore key equals, and then the key from the settings page. These keys are a bit long right now, but I should be able to shorten them down a bit before this video gets uploaded. And that's it. The main downside to this method is that there's going to be a lot more latency involved, since it's going to try to upload an uncompressed image to the server directly. Depending on your internet connection and game you're playing, uh, this could be as much as 5 to 10 seconds. With that said, there is a way to speed it up. This method uses VG Translate to compress the image before it gets sent out over the internet. This should cut down the time it takes to about 1 to 2 seconds per call. It does this by intercepting the request on your home network, compressing the image, and then sending it off to either ztranslate.net or to Google. While VG Translate doesn't need to run on the same machine that RetroArch is running on, I'll be assuming that it is for the rest of this tutorial. We're going to go to gitlab.com slash sphere slash VG Translate to get it. If you're comfortable with Python, you can download the source code to run the program, but if you're on Windows, you can download a pre-compiled executable from this page in the second half of the installation instructions. We download VG Translate Server v1.02.zip and extract it on our computer. 
Now that we have it extracted, we open up config.json in WordPad like so, and then copy in the ztranslate.net API key from the settings page. We then run serve.exe, and we should see it running like so. If this window quickly closes again, then there's likely a JSON formatting error in your config file. In that case, you can run serve.exe from the command prompt, which will keep the window open and you'll be able to read the error you're getting. With serve.exe running, let's go back into RetroArch and change the AI service URL to http colon slash slash localhost colon 4404. We're now done with setup for this method. The final method uses VG Translate with Google APIs instead. This is the fastest method available, but requires you to sign up for a Google account, which requires a credit card. They give you $300 in free credits for signing up though, which should be more than you'll ever need for this. I put a link in the description for how to sign up for a Google account. Once you have one, you can go to the cloud.google.com page and then go to the menu option, API and services, and then the credentials page. Create an API key and then copy it. Open up config.json again, and this time copy the key into the local server OCR key field and the local server translation key field, and change the local server API key type to be Google. Save the file and then run serve.exe. If you see a permission error in the vgtranslateserve.exe window when trying to translate a screenshot, then try waiting a few minutes for the key to propagate on Google servers. If it still doesn't work, try regenerating the key from the credentials page and then copy the new key into config.json again and restart serve.exe. That's the three methods for setting up the AI service. Now that's set up, I want to talk about the OCR page that I added to the ztranslate.net website recently. This page is designed to help tweak the text detection step of the translation process to deal with those cases where it's just failing to read the text. Let's take a look at a SNES game, Top Management 2. Here we see that the formatting of the entries is a bit messed up, since it's trying to turn all the text it finds into a single paragraph. But we can get an idea of what's going on. However, the top two lines aren't getting read at all. And the next game screen is even worse, so let's try to fix this. Go to the settings page on ztranslate.net and click on the OCR page link near the top. This shows the last image that you've had translated and what it looked like after some pre-processing. There's the OCR box, confidence, contrast, and color. There's a description of what these options do in the help section below. In this case, since we have pixel fonts involved, I'm going to change the contrast value for the image to 1, which means we don't change the contrast. And then I'm going to select the text color by clicking on one of the font pixels on the image. You can zoom in on the browser to help with this. The color and hex code is then displayed below the image to the right. I'm going to put that value in the OCR color field, FFFFFF, and then press update. The page now shows what the pre-processed image looks like, and we can see that the text should be clearer for the computer to pick up now. Let's try again. Still a problem with the paragraphing, but I have an idea of what the different sections are saying now. This page, however, yeah, it's not looking so good. The paragraphing is messing it up again. I'm going to go back to the OCR page and click and drag a rectangle from top left to bottom right over some of the text, and then click Update. Now going back to the game and translating again, Okay, headquarters is Tokyo, and the branch office is Hiroshima. Now, the OCR box that I made will be used for all my future translation calls, so I'll unset it by dragging a rectangle from bottom right to top left on the image and then clicking Update.
This page is really useful when menu text is not being picked up or if the text itself is not standing out enough for the computer to read. Usually you can tweak something to get it to work. That's it for the tutorial. But I wanted to mention some things before I sign off. The Z Translate site does have a monthly quota system, but since the number of translation calls coming in at the moment is not that high, I've increased the limit for everyone to about 10,000 calls a month, which should be more than enough for anyone wanting to use it. The server is calling Google's API on the back end, so it does cost me money to keep it running, but it's reasonably small right now. Uh, if that changes, then I'll probably set up a donations page to keep it running. Inside RetroArch, the text-to-speech function is using the audio mixer to play back the speech. So if you're having problems specifically for the speech mode and not image mode, then the audio mixer is probably where the problem is. Not every core is currently supported by the AI service. Specifically, only software cores work right now. Until we fix that, you'll either have to find a software core that works for you, or try the Z-Translate client, which is a standalone application that works with non-RetroArch games and emulators. It's available on the ztranslate.net website. The 1.7.8 v2 version of RetroArch has a bug fix in it for when the source language is set to Japanese. If you're on v1 and you need it to read Japanese text, then you'll have to set the source language to don't care in order to pick it up. Finally, if you have any questions, feedback, or your own issues getting the service to work, the best place to go to is the LibRetro Discord. Go to the RetroArch AI channel and ask for help. That's it for now. Good luck and have fun with the new AI service.